Hello and welcome to another Every Tuesday tutorial. In this week's tutorial, we will be creating some perfectly geometric snowflakes using Adobe Illustrator. And we're gonna be creating these from scratch. I also have the keyboard shortcuts on screen, so you'll be able to see any of my keystrokes as I move along. If I forget to mention anything, they'll be right there for you. So as you can see on screen, this is exactly what we're gonna be creating in this tutorial. So these look super complex, but they're actually extremely simple and easy to make. So I've got my color palette over here. It's just um, a bunch of different shades of blue. So I'm gonna give these to you. And I'm also gonna show you, I get asked this quite often, how I create my color palette over here. So it's really easy. I just grab my ellipse tool over here drag out a circle, I'm holding shift in order to make it a circle. And then I come into my color and I just put in my color build right here. So usually I drag out five of these and then I color them all differently. But for this one, since we have this nice little fade or gradient going on, I actually use the blend tool for this one. Um, so I've got my lightest one right up here and then I've got my darkest one down here, which you can see the color build over here. And then what I did was I knew I wanted three in between here. So I just came over to my blend tool and this is only because I wanted more of a soft gradient feel. Um, so just double click on your blend tool over here. I specified the steps as three because I want three in between these two. Hit okay and then click on the top one, click on the bottom one, and then you get your nice little blend. And then you can just go object expand hit OK, and now these are individual um, pieces that I can select. I can ungroup these two, and now I can select any of these and use them, and also I drop them as I do in all of my tutorials when I need to grab color. So that's just a quick little heads up on that color palette. So I'm gonna bring this over here so we can create similar ones right over here. So essentially these are just made up of one shape and then they're rotated all the way around in a circle perfectly spaced. So we're gonna start with some really easy ones and then we'll build up and end up with more complex looking ones like these ones right here. So the first thing that I do is I draw a line. So you wanna make sure you've got a stroke over here selected. So I've got my light blue over here and I'm just gonna hit my forward slash key on my keyboard and then just drag out a line um, basically any kind of length that you feel comfortable with. So that's a pretty good length for me. And then I actually will delete it and then just click once and it will keep that length that I created previously. And then right here, I'm just gonna put in 60 degrees and now I've got that line that's exactly 60 degrees the way I like it. I'm gonna come over here to my stroke palette. If you don't have your stroke palette open, you can get to it by going window stroke and it'll pop open. And I'm just gonna up this weight to Two points feels pretty good, and I'm gonna round my cap and round my corner. Next, I'm going to make a copy of this. So Alt, click, and while you're dragging, hold Shift, and it'll keep it perfectly even. And then I'm gonna reflect this, so the keyboard shortcut for that is to hit O, click on your reflection point, and then I'm gonna hold Shift, and then just click and drag, and that will reflect it perfectly over. And now I can just drag these until they intersect, and just to make sure that they're perfectly aligned right here, I can select both of them and then just click this little icon up here for horizontal line center. And that makes me know that these are perfectly aligned. Okay, so this one's a pretty basic one. Um, the next thing I'm gonna do is just drop a diamond shape right here. So the quickest way to make a diamond is just grab, grab your rectangle tool, hold shift, so you make a perfect square. I'm gonna fill this so we can see everything. I'm gonna rotate it, but hold shift while you rotate it and you can rotate in 45 degree increments. Um, so now it's kind of diamond shape, but you can still kind of see that it's a square. So with it selected, right click, transform, scale, and just make sure preview selected right here. I'm gonna do a non-uniform scale and I'm gonna change my horizontal increment to 50% and then hit okay. You can choose any other percentage that you want. That's just the one that I prefer. And then just right click, transform, reset bounding box, just cause I like to have my bounding box perfectly around my shape. And now we can scale this down and kind of tuck it right into here. And that's feeling really nice. And now I'm going to set this aside because this is a live stroke right here and I like holding onto this for later. So I'll always make a copy just so I have my original because now I wanna expand this because if I enlarge this later, my stroke, if I don't have it set in my preferences, my stroke, I'm gonna to have to adjust every single time. And I just want it to behave as if it's a shape and not just a stroked path. So with it selected, I'm just gonna go 
object expand, hit OK, and then I'm going to merge these together using my Pathfinder palette. Um, you can get to your Pathfinder palette by going Window, Pathfinder, and then just click this little icon right here for Unite. And now this is one continuous shape, which you can see right there. If I go into Outline Mode, you can see one shape. All right. So now you can recolor this if you want. I'm just gonna grab this color. And now this is where the fun begins. We've got our simple object right here. And I'm gonna move this up here so we've got a little bit of space. So here's the fun part. Um, in order to decide how to perfectly space these around, you first need to decide how many of these you want repeated around. So I usually go between 10 and 12. If you wanna get super crazy, I think this one might be 14 or 18. Um, so I like 10 and 12 feels pretty good for me for snowflakes anyway. Um, so I'm going to group these together and then I'm going to grab my calculator and just go 360 because there's 360 degrees in a circle and I'm going to divide that by the number that I want going around my circle. So if I want 12 that means I need 30 degrees for each one when it rotates. So knowing that with this selected make sure it's selected I'm gonna hit R on my keyboard for my rotate tool. And this is the really important part. If you don't do this, it's not gonna work. You need to hold Alt and then click on a source point for your rotation. So I want it to rotate from right below the bottom of this diamond. So with Alt held on my keyboard, that's my Alt symbol, I'm gonna click and once I do that, it asks me, I get a palette that comes up and I want my angle to be 30 degrees, which we decided on because we did the math. And then I'm gonna hit copy. So now I've got a copy of this, but I want this to be repeated all the way around. So a nice little trick is just hitting Command D or Control D on your keyboard. And that will repeat the last thing you just did in Illustrator. So that's what I'm gonna do. And I'm just gonna keep hitting it until it goes all the way around. And now I have this really awesome snowflake right here if I zoom out. So that's pretty fun. Scale this down a little bit. So the other thing about this, let me make a copy and bring this down, um, is when you're rotating it, so I'm gonna, with it selected, I'm gonna hit R again, I'm gonna hold Alt. I'm gonna click further down this time so you can see the difference that this makes where you decide where your source of rotation is. Um, if I come way down here and then click and do the same thing again, um, you can see how different this looks, even though it's made up of the same components, how different it looks from the other one that I made. So it's pretty cool. You can get a lot of use out of just a simple object. Um, so that's all all of these are. And then what I did is um, whenever you're using an even number when you're going around, um, it's pretty cool because then I can go in here and even though these are grouped, if I hit A on my keyboard for my direct select tool, I can click one and then hold shift and select every other one. And then I can come back over to my colors here and I can just eyedropper a middle one. And then all of a sudden it becomes a little more complex, but also very beautiful and kind of dynamic too with the color. So what I did here, I'm gonna ungroup these so you can really see what each of these is made up of. Um, so that's what this one looked like. And then it's just rotated around. Let's see, we got 12 here for this big one. Um, this really simple one, that's all that was, that made this really cool uh, snowflake. And then this one looked like this. This one is exactly what we just did over here, only it's got a thicker stroke on my, uh, on the lines that I used. And then this one looks like that. And then finally, this one looked like that. So these two right here are also exactly the same, just like what we did. And you can see the difference just um, creating a, a source rotation point that was further down, the difference that it made in the final outcome. Let me show you this one really quick, just so you can see one more example over here. So this was the really complex one that we had 12 on the rotation. So we know that 360 divided by 12 is 30. So I can just select this, hit R, hold Alt, click down here, make sure 30 is right here, hit copy, and then just Command D or Control D it all the way around. And you get this beautiful looking snowflake with a really, really simple shape. So that is how to create 
perfectly spaced geometric snowflakes in Adobe Illustrator. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please subscribe. I release a new design tutorial every single Tuesday. And don't forget to head on over to my blog, every-tuesday.com for even more design tutorials and a bunch of design freebies. Thanks so much for watching, and I will see you next week.